What is going on, people? We are back with another episode with at the boxing doc working over at Promet T uh, PT. I am Kinetic Remedy, uh, helping our moms, dads, aunts, uncles, and weekend warriors understand exercise and how to expedite their results in a safe and efficient manner. Um, for the last last two episodes, we talked about upper body injury prevention, lower body injury prevention. So if you haven't seen those, so go over to uh, Spotify, go over to YouTube, go over to iTunes, because uh, those are out right now. You can learn a little bit more about upper body and lower body injury prevention. And today we'll be talking about um, boxers and who Antonio is working with and many, many, many more uh, groups of people. But today we'll focus on boxers, the issues that they're dealing with. And if we have time later, we'll get into cutting weight. What's more efficient, lifting weights or cardio. So with that said, Antonio, uh, what's going cool. on? You're working with a lot of pro fighters. What is it that you tend to see when they come in to see you? Yeah, so um, most common areas that I see are the knee um, I see elbow, a lot of knee, elbow, um, wrist, shoulder. Um, I would say those are probably the biggest areas and, and low back. So the five biggest areas I would say would be low back, knee, mm -hmm. wrist, shoulder. Yep. And um, I would also say... Mm, I think those are. I think it's just the, those are the big four. You know, those are the big four: wrist, elbow, knee, and lower back. So, um, when looking at these areas, you know, they're constantly. Um, most people with the low back pain, it's 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 just from, you know, being in those extreme positions for a long period of time. So, you know, when we're fighting and when we're in that fighter. Fight, and stuff like that, even training, it puts our back into a more kind of extended posture. So we're more extended. When we're more extended, it puts a little more pressure on that lower back. Um, and then, you know, if, if you're not doing anything to get out of that posture, then you're just going to, you know, now you leave the gym and you're still in the same posture. You go home, you go to sleep, you're still in that same posture. You, you're eating, you're cooking, you're still in that same posture. And you're not getting any stress off of that lower back. So that, that stress that is okay for sparring and it's okay for your 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 sport, but it's not necessarily important for, you know, cleaning the dishes, driving a car, you know, shopping, stuff like that. So we gotta make sure to kind of battle that and 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 learn about the two extremes of movement, right? It's it's okay to be all, you know, tall, upright and, and ready to go. But then we also want to get into some, you know, breathing drills, some rotation drills, make sure we're, you know, having some some spinal care, uh, you know, in, ingrained in their whole program of what they're doing, not just, you know, go, go, go inside the gym and then, you know, forget it. So it's going to bite you in the back, you know, <laughs> to, to quite literally, it's going to bite you in the back if you, uh, you know, if you don't, if you don't address the opposite postures right and and postures uh, you know it's a dynamic thing posture is continually changing um but if we're not changing and if we're you know just all locked up in our back and we don't kind of move in and out of those postures now we're biased in one position for too long and that could lead to some irritation okay so let me so 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 essentially what you're saying is i, I think because there's this contradiction between what we were all taught stand up tall shoulders back really show uh, show your chest, you know, big presence. You're saying that that's counterproductive to overall back health. You shouldn't necessarily sit into that posture as often as we've been told we should be. Yeah, I think it is. I really, you know, and this, this might sound, you know, you know, everyone's like, oh, this might, this is going to challenge everyone's thought process because everyone wants to sit up tall. Right. And, but that's not necessarily, you know, um, that's not necessarily optimal for, for where you need to be. And potentially if you're, if you're upright and forcing your back straight and, and puffing your chest forward, um, you know, I think if it's ne it's definitely necessary if you're just like slouched for hours and you just need to do this. Okay. Yeah. That's again, that you're, you're still balancing out. You've been here for so long. It's okay to get here. But in terms of when we're working out, when we're boxing, when we're running, when we're, you know, fighting, stuff like that, we tend to 
favor this upright neutral posture. Okay, so we're more upright neutral. Great. And that's good for form, maybe. That's good for, you know, what you got to do. Um, but at some point, we're going to have to move our spine in the opposite direction and make sure that we're able to have those movement options there so that when we do have to lift up a piece of grocery bag or when we do have to lift up a case of water, we're able to get a little bit of core engagement round a little bit and move into our hips instead of just being so locked up and then, you know, maybe potentially putting extra stress on the back. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not so much that the upright is, is good posture. It's, it's only good if you've been slouched for hours and you're working at the computer and you just, you know, you're constantly shoulders are rolled in, then, okay. Yeah. You, every now and then you got to give it the opposite direction, but you know, it's not, I'm not saying that oh, like doing the puffing out the chest is a bad thing. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's okay. If you're just doing that for, you know, a short period of time and then you move into the opposite direction and you're just kind of keeping it fluid in, in and out, in and out. So I think that that's one thing I want to make sure um, we get, we get across because, you know, puffing out the chest and you know that all that is doing is you know putting stress on that lower back you know you're you're hyper extending however if you know you you take a class with 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 me or or yourself we'll teach the right way to puff out the chest without losing core control yep that's the next thing right is can i stay vertical with core control um most of the time is Oh, my, if, if most people at home and they sit up tall and they feel their rib cage on the bottom, they'll start to feel that their rib is like popping out from the front side. And, you know, that just shows that we're extended in our spine a little bit. So we're more, that's called the rib flare and that correlates with an extended spine. And if you're just in extension for a prolonged period of time, that's going to, that's going to bite you in the back a little bit. So we want to make sure that those ribs are, are smooth on the way down. We have good core control ribs are down and I'm still vertical and I'm still tall. And that's the ideal. Okay. That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Now, um, do, uh, do, do any of these postures, do any of these have any correlation with any knee pains? pains? Does that sort of, I, I, I start to, live here with a nice and tall body posture. Now my lower back hurts. Does that help to extend down into the knee? Would that extend? Or is there another different sort of approach to my own position before exercise that leads to my knee pains? Yeah, I would say the, the stuff that leads to knee pain isn't usually the knee. It's usually coming from the hip or the ankle. Mm -hmm. So, you know, most of the time I get some guys, I'm, I'm working on them. They're like, oh, you know, why are you working on my hip? Why are you working on my ankle? It's my knee, you know, it's my knee. And I understand that, but it's it's coming from the lack of mobility in your hip or ankle. And when we're twisting and, and throwing punches and we have to rotate pivot, it's all coming from the knee. I mean, all come in, in cases where people have pain, it's coming from your knee. But we need that coming from the the ankle mobility or your hip mobility to get in and out of those postures rather than twisting your knee, right? Because the knee doesn't really, it's kind of a kind of a stupid joint. I mean, it, it only does, it's like your elbow. It just up and down. That's all it really does. It doesn't, it has some rotation components to it, but, you know, very minute. Mm -hmm. um, so it can rotate, but when we need a lot of rotation and we need to really develop force and we're just strictly using our knees to do that, our knees are going to not like that over a period of time. So I think, um, I think this extended posture will lead to poor core control. Poor core control leads to less hip mobility. Because if I'm extended in my lower back and I lose my core control, most of my hip mobility is coming from my lower back because I'm hyperextended in my lower back. So now the hip's like, oh, well, I don't need to move because the lower back is doing everything. And now the hips get tight over time because they're like, oh, look at the lower back. It's extended. It's doing all the rotation. It's moving so much. The, the body doesn't know. The body doesn't know what areas need the most movement. The body doesn't know which area needs the most coordination. They're just trying to get you from point A to point B. 
in the easiest way, the body doesn't use the most kind of the smartest way. They're going to use the easiest way. And sometimes if you, your pattern has just been using lower back for so long, yeah, when you throw a punch or whatever, you're going to be just rotating through the lower back. And the hips are going to say, hey, okay, listen, you don't need me, <laughs> no, essentially. Um, the hips are going to get tight over time because you're not using them the right way. You're not getting into them. And then that's going to lead to knees getting tight and irritated because the hips aren't doing their job. Yeah, makes perfect sense to me. But now let me ask you this. Um, let's say I'm, I'm at home right now and I'm dealing with this knee pain. Is there any way that you can give someone at home a cue as to whether you can identify whether it's coming from the hip or coming from the ankle? Are there certain things that they can sort of? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There is. Um, you know, I call it the... Uh, the knee to wall test where I'll have them, you know, in a half kneel position. And if people aren't watching, I'll, I'm just going to explain it just so you guys can kind of see if I'm in a half kneel position. Okay. And my front foot is in front of me, right? I'm, I'm on my, say I'm on my left knee, right? I'm doing a kind of like a, a half kneeling hip flexor stretch, right? Mm -hmm. My left knee is down. Okay. I'm stretching out my left hip. Great. That's whatever. I'm not worried about the left. I'm worried about my right ankle, okay? So my right ankle is in front of me, right? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a wall in front of that right foot, right? I'm going to measure the wall from my right big toe with my, with my fist and say, okay, this is the wall. This is my big toe, and it's about a fist away from the wall. Great. I'm going to hold down my right heel and try to stretch out my, my calf muscle by bringing my right knee over my toe, yep. but without lifting the heel off the ground. The heel has to stay, and good ankle mobility should be able to touch the wall that's in front of you mm -hmm. that you just measured your wrist in front of or your, your fist. So a um, the toe between, a fist in, in between the toe and the wall, and then you want best. your knee to touch that wall. Yes, yes that's, yes. that's normal ankle mobility. So that's a good indicator. You know, sometimes I have people do that at home and, um, you know, if they're not touching the wall, I, they work on that before they go into their day. Mm -hmm. So they'll, they'll, they kind of, it's a kind of like a nice pre pre check for them to do. Um, if that is tight, you know that your ankle could be contributing to the ankle, to the knee pain okay. because you're, you're, that's called dorsiflexion when you get your knee over toe and you need dorsiflexion for squatting, hip mobility, you know, sort of, uh, jumping, stuff like that. And if it's, if you're not getting it from the ankle, you're going to be getting it from the knee. So that's one thing for the ankle, uh, to see if it's coming from the knee. Um, you know, just like palpation, you know, if you're touching like your tendon in the front side, you know, maybe if it's like local tenderness and some swelling around the knee, obviously it's the knee, that's the issue. And you got to cool that down. It was the hip, pardon, the, the ankle or the hip, pardon. That is right. That pain. Yeah. You're right. You're right. So yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, your knee might be swollen, but again, that might be coming from the ankle or the hip. So just because it's tender and your patella tendon is, is tender and all those things doesn't necessarily mean it's just your uh, knee. Um, mm -hmm. um, so that's good ways to, to kind of differentiate and, and close things out um, in terms of the hip. You know, you want to make sure that you're able to, um, you know, are you able to, you know, get into a full squat? You know, are you able to mm. get like, you know, without any weight, just kind of like squat into a full deep position and, and kind of see how your hips uh, tolerate that? Um, you know, are you able to just do hip stretches? Like, are your hip sh mobility stretches that you're doing, are they like incredibly tight? Like, are you... You know, you know that like where we sit with the shin box angle and like you do that, like, you know, the FRC stuff where mm -hmm. you're in that like 90, 90 position and you got to like lift the back heel off the, the ground. You pull it up to you. Exactly. So like some stuff like that. And I'll just have people put in that and put people in that position. And all of a sudden they're like cramping up, cramping up. You know, they can't even sit into that position. It's something that we just at least just sit into that position and see what we got first. Um, so, so our, our, our stretches become our assessment and our treatment. So, um, you know, just simply just start stretching out your hips and, and, and see, you know, is my, 
do I feel like this is incredibly hard or is this incredibly easy? And um, that'll give you a good idea if you need to start working on it. Um, okay. So that's perfect now, right? So we have some good cues as to what could be the source of their knee pains. Um, again, if they're at home, one of our, you know, one of our moms, aunts, uncles, or somebody's at home and uh, they can't come see us because of whatever's going on in their day to day or weekly schedule or something like that. They just don't have the time, but they do have the time to watch and listen. Do you have any things that they can do first for the ankle and secondly, for the hip? to relieve the pain if they figure out, okay, it's the, it's the, it's the ankle that's tight that's causing my knee pain, it's my hip that's tight that's causing knee pain. Do you have anything that they can do at home to help relieve that pain now that they know where the source is? Absolutely. So first thing is going through, um, going through some soft tissue stuff. So what does that mean? That means maybe some foam roll, maybe that means some lacrosse ball action. So what is that? What do we do with that? We we target um, we target certain areas of the hip, right? Maybe we take a, a foam roll. We go up and down the front of the hip for about you know 20, 30 seconds. Maybe we're we're really tight in our glute. We stand against the wall and we put a ball right next to our the top of the hip, and we do some up and down with the leg, uh, some pin and stretch if you wanna if you wanna call it where you know say I'm standing up against the wall and I pin my right hip up against the wall to feel like a kind of almost like a trigger point. And then now I don't move the lacrosse ball. I move my leg up and down as like a pin and stretch type of thing. Mm -hmm. So you're just kind of loosening up some tissue and not too long. You're just kind of getting a sense of where you're at, just kind of activating certain things. Um, then immediately after that is we want to activate, right? We want to start activating certain muscles. So in that position, we can do you know, a simple uh, a wall sit, maybe it, it could be a wall sit that might just you're you're, stand, you're sitting up against the wall, you're keeping your core tight, you're feeling thighs and core and you just you just hold that for maybe 10, 15 seconds, just to bring pressure off of the knees and into yeah, kind of your hamstrings and thighs and your glutes mm -hmm. by holding it for just time, 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds, you're just holding a wall sit, you know, stuff like that. Then I would go then I would go right into some all your all the hip mobility drills, you know you can you can you can go into certainly, you know um, the groin kind of stretch where you kind of open up the the legs there. You can you certainly do that half kneeling hip flexor stretch where you're gaining some hip extension. You know keeping that core tight in the half kneeling position. Um, would, you, would you like me to show some of these or? I'm actually writing that down now because I think um, we could show some of these. But um, I think because of our time constraints and just giving them the information and the understanding is good. But I, I, I kind of want to just watching this now, I think we should definitely provide sort of a, a long list and demonstration. Yeah. Of all of these yeah. movements for people to uh, to tune in to, to tune into because they, like I can visualize all of them myself, but there's a lot to show and demonstrate. Yeah, there's a lot, you know, and I think I think I think instead of giving you specific exercises, I think the the audience might benefit more from the why behind it, right? So like I said, let's, it's soft tissue first, mobility first, right? So all those things, it's, it's maybe a lacrosse ball, you know, like self massage. So think about self massage as number one, mm -hmm. self massage. Number one, number two is going to be mobility, hip stretches, ankle stretches, you know, is it a, it might be a downward dog, right? It might be a downward dog stretch for the, for the, for the calf. It might be, you know, it could be your, um, you know, a pec stretch, right? For the, for the pec or any mobility drills. That's number two. Number three is then activate, right? So then you got to start working the mo movements that could be the breathing drills against the wall. That could be your 90, 90, you know, mini hip lifts for the hamstrings, squeezing a ball between the knees, laying on your back or your feet up on a chair. That could be some wall sits, okay? That could be that. So the idea is your self, your self, your self, uh, self massage, mm -hmm. where you're stretching your mobility, and then your activation. So now you're starting to work the muscles in that range. Mm -hmm. So I would say those are big three just to start with. And then you do that consistently for a really long time, and, you know, you start cleaning up certain areas. Um you know, unfortunately, there's no quick little fixes, but these little things 
are quick to do, but you just yeah. got to do them repeatedly, um, consistently. Yeah, I think uh, today we just hit uh, hit the nail on the hit the nail on the head. Uh, I know a lot of our fighters because we opened up with a uh, dem- with uh, bringing this to fighters. A lot of times, especially me, us being in the gym so frequently, you see these guys come in. They don't they don't warm up, and they don't um, they don't cool down. They just tend to uh, grab the rope, hit the ground running, and then a month later, like, oh, my knees killing me, my back's killing me, my shoulder, my neck, right. all these things, all these little pains. And it's really just about what you're saying. This this simple little three step process. Yes. Yes. Long term, and um, we're giving them the understanding now. But I believe that what we also just unlocked is that we're going to begin to start demonstrating for all you yeah. guys who are watching and listening that we are now going to have to start providing you with some demonstrations. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's, I think that's definitely something we should, um, we should work on too. So, you know, you, you have the videos and you can kind of see how to get these movements going and, uh, and, and just, you know, put up, put some, uh, put a, put a little visual to it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was perfect. And Sonia, you, you, once again, as, uh, as I've observed for the last three or four episodes, I feel like you've been, hitting everything on the head. And I really feel like anyone who's listening will get a very clear insight into what it is we're trying to uh, get across. To the yeah, it's huge. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, these concepts are, are so important. You know, it's, it's, it's our body is a whole unit. It's not just this independent piece. You know, it's not, you know, piece by piece. It's the whole body kind of is very well connected and, uh, you know, there are certain areas. It's hard to imagine that you know, my you know this leads to shoulder tightness or my lower back leads to knee pain. It's hard to imagine it, but you know, by putting the pieces together and by you know putting the action into your steps on a daily basis, you know, and and working all over to help with certain areas and not just looking at that but seeing that you're working other areas up and below to really bring a little bit more connection through the body and i think that's it's a hard concept but um that's 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 really the truth to it yeah everything everything and uh i think to really round it all out we're going to have to start to bring the visualization to the people because uh yeah the words are essential people pay a lot of money to go to courses to, to learn what they're learning right now in these small yeah. hour talks that we've been having with you and i hope that the people listening take uh, can take heed to the words that you're giving because it's it's priceless really it's truly priceless you can't yeah it's amazing so with that said we're out of time next week um next week we will be talking about cutting weight and what is yeah. better, uh between lifting weights and cardio or any difference between that um and we will be coming, we will be presenting you guys with some demonstrations today that became very, very clear. So I hope you guys like it. Hope you guys enjoy. Please give us a follow on Instagram over at The Boxing Doc, at Promet PT, at Kinetic Remedy, and listen in on the podcast over also at Kinetic Remedy on Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube. And uh, give us some support because we'll be having much, much more coming for you guys. And we can close awesome. it out, Antonio. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty much well said. Yeah, I mean, listen, <laughs> that was that was everything I would say. Um, just keep an open mind, keep listening, and uh, you know, share and try to implement some of these simple steps to uh, you know just to better your performance and just your quality of life as well. Yes, sir. All right. Sounds good, brother. Thank you, guys. Everyone, have a great day. Peace.